Hello, hello again. Well, just finished up MUSC. I'm headed to uh, Myrtle Beach right now, Georgetown. Georgetown, South Carolina. Um, I did a video on Kevin Samuels this morning. And as I got in the car, I, I got off the phone with a coworker. I was talking to one of my coworkers. And then I got another phone call from the hotline. You guys don't know what the hotline is, but anyways, um, I decided to uh, go on YouTube and listen to, you know, when I drive, I like to listen to different things on YouTube. I can't really watch it because I'm driving, but I like to listen to different things. So I, I said, let me see what's in my feed. I saw another Ke Kevin Sam Samuels video. And um, I've been talking about synchronicity for a good while now. And so the video that came up, I started watching that and a lot of things were right in sync with what I'm thinking, what's going on in my life right now. And it was Kevin Samuels. And I'm like, man, that's kind of weird. I just, I was just, I just made a video about this guy. Now it's like we're in sync, uh, uh, close to being in sync anyways. So I'm gonna play a little bit of it, the audio and um, and I'll stop it from time to time to elaborate on some things. But let me play a little bit of his audio. I hope he, I hope this is not a copyright uh, issue, but I don't know how cool the brother is or uh, not cool. So let me go ahead and play a little bit of it. Taking on so many pressures because that's just who we are as men, we break. So a lot of you ladies gotta realize you're getting guys who are good dudes just had no leadership or direction. Nobody told us the roadmap. So we're trying to figure out all this other stuff and we don't like failing you. We don't like failing you. So a lot of dudes are scared too. Just like, well, I'm trying to become a man I never saw, a father I never saw, a husband I never saw, a brother I never saw, a friend I never saw, all while at the same time moving in the world. So, so right there, he's talking about his dad not being in his life. Um, and I'll let him explain a little bit more. I just had to give a little, uh, give a little, just elaborate on what he was talking about right now. This is why I need y'all get, I need you ladies to understand that a lot of times y'all see us as brothers, men, and y'all, y'all don't realize how important y'all's words are to men. That's why I said feminine, beautiful, and inspirational. I got to stop him again right there. I think, I, I truly do believe that women don't realize how powerful you guys' words are to your to your man, to your man. You know, because I, I tell my wife all the time, I you know, look, you don't realize how powerful your words are. Uh, your words can either tear your man apart or build him up like uh, a god. I mean, that, that's true. And I think any man will tell you the same thing. The words that come out of the woman's mouth, whether she's calling him a no good son of a bitch or whatever, or her her God or her king or her, her everything. You know, you can do everything. Whatever you want to do, whatever you put your mind to, you can do it, baby. Those words are powerful. You don't realize how powerful your, your, your words are to your man. So when he said that, that was a, a a bell that went off. I'm like, okay, this, this seems like it's a little in sync with what I was, what I've been thinking lately. I love the old school cartoon Popeye. Why? Because Popeye, Brutus, Wimpy, and Olive Oil. But you realize the impact Olive Oil had on Popeye? Not me. You could say he was a simp and this all the No, 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 no. Popeye became the best version of himself. When he stopped trying to worry about, when he stopped trying to worry about um, uh, dealing with Brutus, when every time Olive Oil was in trouble, what would he do? He could his ass up there and pop a can of spinach. I want you guys to understand. You ladies need to understand. Your words to men are like spinach. I'm gonna tell you something, okay? Trust your godfather. Ladies, your words, you gotta remember, if you care about a man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta chill on that sharp tongue because you're speaking to the scared little boy in him. Okay, I'm not supposed to.
break their code, but I'm old. I, I can risk it. I don't expect my young dudes to go out and risk it. But I'm going to tell you, you're speaking to the scared little boy in here. You have, our mothers had a direct line into our hearts. This is what Ian Van Zant used to talk about. And many of us never learned how to communicate the right way. So you got to be careful with your words when you're dealing with your man. And conversely, men, this is hard to understand too. She was raised by a mother who was more like a sister to her. It's like we were son husbands, they were daughter sisters, okay? So a lot of these women, whilst boys may have gotten overly loved on, uh, or it's either, it's extreme, and there could be a lot of women, especially attractive women, their mother's biological instincts said, this is my younger replacement, right? So a lot of women went to get to their love for their mothers, and their mother's like, you tough, you'll be all right. So a lot of women don't know how to feel or emote, right? So, and then their dads weren't around, just like our dads went around, cause just like when you with your uh, with your woman, right? If you got a kid, what's going on between you and your lady is what's between them. You her daddy, and that's her mama. Okay, so all these dynamics are going on. So think about your lady friend. Your lady friend going through a bad area right now. Um. And didn't have her dad in her life. I guess I'm going through a bad area. I'm in Mount Pleasant. Good to where she could be the pr protected princess. And her mom didn't have her husband to where she had her man. So that she didn't have to look at her daughter as her replacement. So her daughter is not being protected like a princess. Going to her mother. Not getting, um, not being able to speak to her mom in a, a loving way. Stuff coming up. So you get this woman out here. She's told she needs to be able to live in New York City, LA, take care of yourself, be strong, independent, such and so forth. And all these girls wanted to do was be able to go to girl cookies, have sleepovers, easy bake oven. They wanted to just be able to do girly stuff. Go to princess birthday parties and all that stuff because that's what I did with my daughter. I'm, I'm a big six foot four man and I'm taking my baby girl to princess birthday parties. Little girls, when they're around each other, want to be girls. But you think about it, that fine woman you're looking at who she can speak poison into your... Stay in the middle two lanes. We have to remember that you're speaking to the little girl and her too. This is why... And here's the, here's the fucked up part, man. <laughs> okay? Here's the fucked up part. I'm going to pause it right there. Yeah, and I never looked at it from that from that uh, perspective. I guess I have, but I never really went in... Went, went into, you know, any deep thinking on um you know my my wife or any woman that i've ever been with in in the uh, in the past as as you know being a little girl or looking at them as a little girl and ultimately we all still have that kid inside of us and if you can see that kid in a person you know you can see past a lot of other things you know what i mean you can see when that little child is scared and hurt and 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 um, and you can address that little child versus being angry and looking at that, that person as an angry uh, adult who should know better, you know what I mean? So I, I'll let him explain a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna use a Kwame Brown, a doodle twist. Here's the fucked up part. Oh, so I had to stop it right there because when he shouted out Kwame Brown, I was like, okay, yeah, this is something weird going on. You know, I've never, I, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe he has shot out Kwame before, but I, you know, I don't watch a lot of Kevin Samuels, but I thought that was kind of interesting that he shouted out Kwame Brown. The little broken boy in you has to step into the man to speak to the little girl in her before she can speak to the little boy in you. That is the problem. That's, that's what comes with power head shipping a penis. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. I know it ain't fair. You're like, well, wait a minute. I didn't get a grown up and she didn't get a grown up. Yeah. I can't change it, bro. I can't change it. And I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't like that as young black men, you're having to step into a space that's, that you didn't see. That's why I say we build it as we fly it. That's why I say all of us are broken. We got to give each other grace and mercy to, in order to, because somebody's going to have to risk something. For, for any woman, and this is any woman, but especially black women, 
you know, everybody like, you hate black women. If I hated black women, I wouldn't talk to you. If I hated black women, let me tell you what I would do. If I hated black women, the, 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 the way I can present an impact, I bring a bunch of nine black women in and, and, and give them the code on how to get black men. Just to, to believe. It's not that I don't like black women. I want us to be better than we ever thought we could be. So I fucked up a lot in life. I've had a lot of pains, heartaches, all this other kind of stuff. And I'm sharing it with you so you don't have to. You can choose to say, eh, I don't like his delivery. I don't like his tone. But if you just get over the tone and understand the heart of the man that's trying to speak to you, I'm not trying to tear you down. But what I am telling you, this world cares nothing about all that stuff. When we are out here, everybody has a story. Everybody has a problem, but ain't nobody coming for us. And when the winter comes, just like it was in that pandemic, you got single men, single women. We're all isolated, alone, and vulnerable. We are better off as a group. We are better off when we have groups of men, groups of women, and the men are doing what the men are supposed to do, and the women are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And there is nothing that's going to be require each one of us to, to be real with ourselves and if you can find some a group of men to, to be your wolf pack, your gauntlet as it were, to keep you on task and in frame to keep uh, that little boy scared part of you you know, you gotta, you gotta talk to that little boy and tell him inside of you too because he's in that corner over there waiting to come out you gotta be like, I'm I got it. I've done the work. You, you didn't get what you needed coming up, but I got you now. Don't go back into that part. You just got to make peace with I'm going to stop it right here, but basically what I, I'm going to sum it up as he's addressing the, the many issues that we have from our childhood. You know, a lot. we have a lot of issues. I didn't say before, but he started off talking about his big, growing up as a, a only child, having the only child syndrome, and not having his father in his life, and having to be the dad, the husband, the big brother, you know, and all these things, and having and feeling like he had to uh, had to prove himself all the time. You know, what it sums up to is that the majority of us, as a community, grew up with some deeply rooted issues and we're you know we've never addressed those issues you know um, I believe that it should be some type of mandatory thing that we uh, all seek out some kind of counsel some kind of you know guidance you know we need somebody to talk to to release a lot of these things that we have pent up inside of us you know because if you release that energy basically what that's what it is it's a, it's a vibration we have de different negative vibrations that are still with us in our body, in our physical form that we need to release. And the only way sometimes you can release that stuff is to talk about it, you know, and know that it's okay to release it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. I, I decided to do a Kevin Samuels video. And of course I got another video in his feed. That's the video I just played. And it was very in sync with what I'm thinking these days. And then when he said the Dolo twist, Kwame Brown shout out. That was official. That's when I said I got to make a video about this guy, another video about this guy, back to back. And uh, I'll go ahead and post it as soon as I get to uh, Wi Fi. And that'll probably be my last video today. Um, but if you guys are liking the content, go ahead, hit that like button, share, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, shout out to all of my subscribers. Shout out to Kevin Samuels. Shout out to Kwame, um, my Geechee brother. And uh, yeah, I think right now we're in a we're in a time where there's a lot of healing being done, and that healing is coming from a guy like Kevin Samuels. Not not all of it. I don't agree with everything he said. I said that before. Uh, but a lot of healing is coming from him. A lot of healing is coming from Kwame Brown. And I said this before. I don't agree with everything that Kwame says. But you can't deny when someone is giving you medicine when somebody's giving you medicine you got to keep that you got to keep taking that medicine in that way you can get to a point where you can start giving out medicine you know so i think there's a lot of healing going on right now and, I, and i'm loving it. but uh, that's that's all i got to say right now it's been about 15 minutes uh if you're liking my content like i said 
hit that like button, subscribe. I'm a writer. I'll put my the website to my, where you can find my books in the uh, description. And uh, <coughs> until next time, y'all be blessed.